Hi lovelies and good morning my beautiful witches and muggles alike. Today I'm going to take you along for another day in the life of a witch, a witch vlog about my Yule preparations and general magic and witchiness. So what is on the agenda for today? Let's see. The snow is falling down. I've been longing for this Christmas. When everyone's around to share this holiday. <laughs> My son is sitting right there having his breakfast and he's just looking at me like, man, what are you doing? Kind of looks weirder without the music playing. So I want to start this day off with going to the nice frosty winter forest to collect some resin because the Raunechte or Yuletide is approaching, which at least here in Bavaria are very much linked to smoke cleansing the shit out of your house and really digging deep uh, into oracle and into self-discovery. So we have 12 days full of different uh, herbal and smoke blends that we are going to make for different purposes and we'll talk about that later on when we're closer to the actual dates. But today we are prepping for that and we're going out and we're getting all kinds of local resins for that. Mom. The Baum, yeah. Uh, I... Hi Baum. Mommy? Where was I? So right, when I go in the forest, especially in winter, I do like to give some little offerings, some little thanks to mother nature, basically, if I'm taking something, because it's a bit harder on the wildlife then. I do that in summer too, but um, way less intense. So I thought what we can do today is to craft some little natural offerings. And you can either use that for the wildlife or if you are working with spirit, or if you wanna give it to a specific deity that is connected to nature and to animals and to all living beings, that might be a fun idea as well. It's like little festive hangers that we can hang in the trees for mainly the birds to feed on and I'm gonna share my favorite recipe for that with you today it's super simple it's super fun to do especially with kids and we can just take them along and then hang them on the trees where we take the resin from let's get started <laughs> many many forests and other animals to the big joy of my little one and now we went to a place where there were just trees cut which is the best place to find resins because the chances of a tree that's getting cut down you might actually hear the cutting in the background 
um, and hurting another tree is quite high. And what resin essentially is, is the, the sticky stuff that comes out of a tree when it's getting hurt to seal um, the surface again. You want to look out for the really hard stuff if you want to use it immediately, like the ones that is already dried and old. Um, if it's still very sticky, you can also harvest that, but that is fresher and it will need to harden at home and it will take around, depending, 6 to 12 months. And personally, I really dislike to buy resins or herbs that I can find for free outside in nature. <laughs> Um, first of all, I think it really bonds you to your area and you learn so much more about the traditions and the culture and the folklore if you really start to look into these things. And honestly, it doesn't really matter where you are in the world because everywhere on the planet there are some things that people used since ancient on to survive and to thrive and for the spiritual practices. So we all have different stuff available, but... You know, you can also replace things. You don't necessarily need like super um, fancy, exotic things to to work magic with. Obviously, I will also sometimes buy stuff that I that I can't get here because I just like it. But there's also a lot of natural, local replacements, so it's really really fun to do. The child is running away. Okay, let's go that way. We also found a lot of blackthorn, which is now ready to harvest after the first frost and you can make the best magical wine with that. So we might do that as well. And I will get our knife out and carefully collect some treasures. Ciao. Sticky, sticky. Oh, it smells so good and now we have collected some things and we already have red cheeks because we're cold. So we're now going home and as it's the 4th of December today, it's the traditional day to cut the Barbaros twig. That's actually a really cool tradition we have here in Bavaria and it stems from pagan times and fertility rites. Uh <laughs> and it's also used for oracle and it's also used for oracle for the new year um, <laughs> so if you want to know more about that i posted um yesterday it should be yesterday then for you <laughs> I posted on the 4th of uh, December about it on my Instagram. Um, some cool stories and backgrounds. Some cool stories and backgrounds and what it entails. Okay, let's go. <laughs>
we are back it was lovely it was so cold i know that sounds weird but i love to go out and then have my fingers basically frozen purple and then to come back home and make like a nice hot tea or coffee and just sit wrapped in a blanket on the couch and like warm up <laughs> so i put the baby down for a nap and now I'm going to make a treat for myself that I love so much. An eggnog latte. My favorite drink for this time of year. Here in Germany, eggnog is not really a thing. We have something similar called uh, Eierlikör, but that's very concentrated and extremely boozy. So you can't really buy eggnog in a store, so you always have to make it yourself. And that recipe that I found is ridiculously good and we're going to make it together now a little batch for my coffee and then a tiny little batch that i will keep for tonight to make a spiced rum eggnog so when we were just in the garden cutting the twig i walked over to my neighbor's house i have an elderly neighbor to bring her some of the cookies i baked and i haven't seen her in a couple of weeks just because of restrictions and everything and she's the happiest person you could imagine and when i saw her today i was really shocked because she was so depressed and and telling me how much it affected her like the constant being alone and not being able to go out and um she doesn't really have family so i'm really happy i went over there um kind of breaking the law here but i just you know i just wanted to get it out there people if you do have a neighbor or someone that you know that's alone doesn't matter what age they are even though i think it hits the older generation especially the one that might not be able to um, communicate online or use social media maybe do something nice for them today like bake some cookies bring them over leave them in front of the door write a letter whatever spread some joy just an idea for you but now let's go to the kitchen and let's make some eggnog
delicious eggnog latte. I thought I would use the time while the baby is still napping to have a little me moment and to do something for my own personal enjoyment and development because this time of the year for me has two components. On the one side very merry, bright, joyous holiday season and all the excitement that comes with that and on the other side also the tranquility and peace and darkness and the the cold where for me personally it's always easier to kind of sort my thoughts to look inside a bit more and to reflect upon my life and upon my decisions and with the yuletide approaching that for me are really 12 days filled with um, personal development and really looking deep into my desires, into my flaws, into things I'm grateful for, into things that I want to have better the next year, I thought it would be a great time to prepare a little and just um, get clear on what I want to focus on in the next year. So I thought I would do a little New Year's tarot spread so I can already then prepare better for the 12 days of Christmas or Yuletide or Raunacht. So I wanted to show you how I do my New Year spread. I am quite new to tarot, so I'm not a professional whatsoever. But I thought I would share because it's fun. <laughs> gonna place the first card in the middle and that's gonna be um, a card about the main theme of the next year and then I wanna put my next three cards up here. So the second one uh, will help me reflect on departing energies from the previous year from 2020. I guess there are a lot. <laughs> Card three is looking more into the future of what kind of talents I will express next year or work with next year. Card number four will be more about opportunities to seize in the coming year. Card number five is upcoming obstacles. Number six will help me get insight on how to deal with upcoming obstacles. And the card number seven I will put down to reflect more upon how I will achieve my goals and dreams in the next year. Okay, now let's flip them around. I don't really work with um, reversed or how's that called? Straight? I just take the card with all its meanings and then see what applies to my life best. Um, for me it's really a reflection tool, so I think that works best. So let's look into the main theme of the next year. So my trusted website that I use for everything, Biddy Tarot, tells me that it's all about celebration, joy, harmony, relaxation and homecoming. Well, that sounds amazing. Um, the reversed meaning also mentions conflict with others, in a harmony and transition. That already sounds like a way better theme than 2020 had to offer. Now, let's look into the departing energies from last year. The Eight of Wands, meaning delays, frustrations, resisting change, internal alignment, movement, fast-paced change, action, alignment, air travel, uh, very much applies to my life. <laughs> Even the air travel, because I used to travel a lot by air for my job, which I'm obviously not doing anymore, so that's funny. Um, but also for the rest, I feel like this year has been quite hectic. There was a lot of movement, a lot of change, a lot of action that I had to take, and I wouldn't mind those energies departing a little bit and everything getting more into some sort of uh, routine, some sort of calmer waters. Now let's look into talents to express next year. One who gives abundantly of all of life's sweetness, generous and motherly, a resource for wealth. Well, I um, do enjoy my motherly side um, 
towards my kid and also towards others that would like to care for others. So that is definitely a talent that I would um, see forthcoming in the next year that I since always liked to, to use in my life and to, to serve others, to nurture others. That's what I'm thriving on. Future opportunities. The Two of Wands. It's telling me future planning, progress, decisions, discovery, personal goals, inner alignment, fear of unknown, lack of planning. In a way, I do feel that at the moment I am on a path of self-discovery again and especially with a channel and diving deeper into my practice, like actually like practicing more often and um, sharing it with more people does further that so yeah i'm excited to to see that as an opportunity for next year i also would really love to know if you guys um do something like that if you're doing oracle for the new year if you're doing tarot or if you use any kind of other divination method and i always love to get to know you better i love to like connect with the people that are watching those videos i said before otherwise i feel like i'm just talking to a camera and it's so unpersonal i would love to know what your personal goals are for the next years things that you might want to let go of things that are important for you or maybe you also want to share um, one of your new year's oracle if you already did one um, I would really love if you could comment something down below. <laughs> Me time did end a little bit earlier than expected. Um, I'll continue this in the evening, but... All right guys, so the rest of the afternoon we spent baking and playing and entertaining the baby. And I'm sorry if this vlog was a little bit all over the place <laughs> in comparison to my others, but it's... Uh, a task to put out a video every day especially being alone with a baby i hope you enjoyed it anyway and we're now off for a little walk to enjoy the twinkle lights okay have a lovely day and see you soon